Hello students, today we'll be conducting two experiments which is Western Blot Analysis and ELISA. Introduction Western Blot and enzyme-linked immunosorbent assay, also referred to as ELISA, are both widely used as diagnostic tools in medicine and as quality control measures in various industries. They are also used as analytical tools in biomedical research for the detection and quantification of specific antigens or antibodies in a given sample. These two procedures share similar basic principles. Western blot is carried out on a membrane, whereas ELISA is performed in a micro titer plate. Both techniques employ the specificity of interaction between antigen and antibody. We'll first discuss about Western blot. The principle, Western blot is the transfer of proteins from the SDS page gel to a solid supporting membrane. There are two types of blotting apparatus used to transfer protein to solid supports. These facilitate either wet transfer or semi-dry transfer. Electrophoresis is used to separate complex mixture of proteins denaturing. This continuous one-dimensional gel electrophoresis separates proteins only based on molecular size as they move through a SDS polyacrylamide gel towards the anode with the smaller protein migrating faster and bigger protein running slower. After this, the gel is placed over a sheet of nitrocellulose and the protein in the gel is electrophoretically transferred to the nitrocellulose. The nitrocellulose is then soaked in blocking buffer, which is around 3% of skimmed milk, to block the non-specific binding of proteins. The nitrocellulose is then incubated with the specific antibody for the protein of interest. The nitrocellulose is then incubated with a secondary antibody, which is specific for the first antibody. The second antibody, which is also referred to as secondary antibody, will typically have a covalently attached enzyme, which when provided with a chromogenic substrate will cause a color reaction. Thus, the molecular weight and the amount of the desired protein can be characterized from a complex mixture. In the experiment, some of the materials that are required are protein sample, SDS page apparatus, 30% acrylamide, ammonium persulfate, TMET, 1 molar tris buffer of pH 6.8, 1.5 molar buffer of tris which is around pH of 8.8, 2x loading dye, transfer apparatus, nitrocellulose or PVDF membrane, transfer buffer, primary antibody, secondary antibody, coloring substrate, skimmed milk, TBST, was buffer. In the procedure, we first have to conduct an SDS page. In the process of SDS page, there is the preparation of separating gel in the first step. In the first step, set the casting frames, that is clamp two glass plate in the casting frame on the casting stands. In the second step, prepare the gel solution in a separate 25 ml beaker or a 10 ml centrifuge tube. In the third step, pipette appropriate amount of separating gel solution into the gap between the glass plates. Fourth, to make the top of the separating gel be horizontal, fill in water or isopropanol into the gap. In the next step, wait for 20 to 30 minutes to get it gel. Next, preparation of stacking gel. Discard the water or isopropanol from the top of the stacking gel and you can see the separating gel which is left. In the seventh step, Pipe it in stacking gel until it overflows. In the eighth step, insert 
the well forming comb without trapping air under the teeth. Next, wait for around 20 to 30 minutes to get it gel. In the next step, make sure a complete gelation of the stacking gel. Take the glass plates out of the casting frame and set them in the cell buffer dam. Pour the running buffer, that is the electrophoresis buffer, into the inner chamber and keep pouring after overflow until the buffer surface reaches the required level in the outer chamber. In the next step of SDS page electrophoresis, we have preparation and loading the samples. Mix your sample with sample buffer, that is the loading buffer. In the next step, heat them in boiling water for around 5 to 10 minutes. Next, load prepared sample into wells and make sure not to overflow. Don't forget loading protein markers into the first lane. Then cover the top and connect the anodes. Next, set an appropriate vault and run the electrophoresis when everything is done. Next step, as for the total running time, stop SDS page running when the die front has reached the bottom of the separating gel. After the electrophoresis is done, we'll be transferring the protein from the SDS page to a membrane. In the first step of membrane transfer, we have preparation of PVDF membrane. First, wet membrane by laying it on the surface of methanol for 15 seconds. The membrane should change from opaque to semi-transparent. Next, carefully place the membrane in deionized water and soak for two minutes. In the next step, carefully place the membrane in transfer buffer for around five minutes. Assembly of transfer unit. Wet two piece of filter paper in transfer buffer and place on anode plate of apparatus. Avoid trapping air bubble. Next, wet one piece of filter paper in transfer buffer and place on top of the filter paper stack. In the next step, remove PVDF membrane from transfer buffer, place on top of filter paper stack. In the next step, place gel on top of PVDF membrane, taking care not to trap air bubble between gel and the membrane. After this, wet three pieces of filter paper in transfer buffer and place on top of the gel. Use a clean plastic test tube to roll out air bubbles. Next, place cathode plate of blotter on top of the transfer stack. Transfer conditions and handling of membrane after transfer. Connect high voltage cords to power supply. Apply a constant current of around 1.9 to 2.5 milliampere per centimeter square of gel area for around 30 to 60 minutes. Appropriate transfer time must be determined empirically. Next, after transfer is complete, turn off the power supply and remove cathode plate of the blotter. Next, remove transfer membrane and cut lower right corner of the membrane to mark orientation of the membrane. After this, discard the first two layer of the filter paper and gel, mark the bands of the molecular weight marker on the membrane with a ballpoint pen. In the next step of western blotting, we have immunodetection, in which the first step is blocking. If membrane was dried and stored at 4 degrees centigrade, re-wet it in 100% methanol for a few seconds. Discard methanol and rinse membrane in deionized water. Block unoccupied protein binding sites on membrane by placing membrane in blocking buffer. Incubate on rocker or shaker at room temperature for one to two hours, after which pour off the blocking buffer. This is followed by incubation with primary antibody. The first step is 
prepare primary antibody in primary and secondary antibody solutions. Add sufficient primary antibody solution with enough volume to cover the entire blood. In the next step, place container in a rocker and incubate at room temperature for one hour. Alternatively, the primary antibody incubation can be carried out at 4 degrees centigrade overnight to improve detection limit. This is followed by the next step which is pour off the primary antibody solution and rinse membrane twice with deionized water. Then wash membrane twice in wash solution for 15 minutes each with shaking. After incubation with the primary antibody, we will be incubating with the secondary antibody. The membrane is then incubated with secondary antibody with the appropriate dilution as mentioned by the manufacturer or for one hour. Next, pour off the secondary antibody solution and wash the membrane with washing solution thrice. In the next step of the western blotting process, we have the detection of signals. A substrate reacts with the enzyme that is bound to the secondary antibody to generate colored substance, namely visible protein bands. Alkaline phosphatase and horse redis peroxidase are the two enzymes that are used extensively. Enhanced chemiluminescence is another method that employs HPR detection. Using HRP as the enzyme level, luminescent substances luminol will be oxidized by hydrogen peroxide and will luminescence. Moreover, enhancers in the substrate will enable a thousand-fold increase in light intensity. HRP will be detected when the blood is sensitized on the photographic film. In the result, the target protein is detected and the levels in the cells or tissues are evaluated through densitometry and location of the visible protein bands confirmed with molecular weight markers. Now let us discuss about ELISA. In principle, ELISA uses the basic immunology concept of an antigen binding to its specific antibody, which allows detection of very small quantities of antigens such as proteins, peptides, hormones, or antibody in a fluid sample. ELISA utilizes enzyme-labeled antigens and antibodies to detect the biological molecules. The most commonly used enzymes being alkaline phosphatase, horse redis peroxidase, and glucose oxidase. The antigen in fluid phase is immobilized usually in a 96-well microtiter plate. The antigen is allowed to bind to a separate antibody, which is itself subsequently detected by a secondary enzyme coupled antibody. A chromogenic substrate for the enzyme yields a visible color change or fluorescence, indicating the presence of antigen. Quantitative or qualitative measures can be assessed based on such colorimetric reading. Fluorogenic substrates have higher sensitivity and can accurately measure level of antigen concentration in the sample. Various types of ELISAs have been employed with modifications to the basic steps. The DOT enzyme-linked immunosorbent assay, that is a DOT ELISA, is a highly versatile solid phase immunoassay for antibody or antigen detection. The assay uses minute amount of reagent dotted onto solid surfaces such as nitrocellulose and other paper membrane which avidly binds proteins. After incubation with antigen-specific antibody and enzyme-conjugated antibody, the addition of a precipitable chromogenic substrate causes the formation of a colored dot on a solid phase which is visually red. The DOT ELISA has been used extensively in the detection of human and veterinary protozoan and metozoan parasitic diseases, including amoebiasis, babesiosis, fasciolysis, cutaneous and visceral leishmaniasis, cysticercosis, acinococcosis, malaria, cystosomiasis, 
toxocariasis, toxoplasmosis, trichinosis, trypanosomiasis, and even exotic tick infestation. Some of the materials required in a DOT ELISA experiment are DOT ELISA strip, test serum, 10x assay buffer, antibody HRB conjugate, TMB and H2O2, 50 ml centrifuge tubes, test tubes, distilled water, micropipette and micropipette tips. In the procedure of DOT ELISA, in the first step, take 2 ml of 1x assay buffer in a test tube and add 2 microliter of the test serum sample. Mix thoroughly by pipetting. In the next step, insert a dot ELISA strip into the tube, which is followed by the step of incubating the tube at room temperature for 20 minutes. Discard the solution after this. In the next step, wash the strip two times by dipping it in 2 ml of 1x SA buffer for about 5 minutes each. Replace the buffer each time. In the next step, take 2 ml of 1x SA buffer in a fresh test tube, add 2 microliter of HRP conjugated antibody to it, mix thoroughly by pipetting, dip the ELISA strip into it and allow the reaction to take place for around 20 minutes. Next, wash the strip as in step 4 for 2 times. In the next step, in a collection tube, Take 1.3 ml of DMB or H2O2 and dip the ELISA strip into this substrate solution. Next, observe the strip after 5 to 10 minutes for the appearance of blue spot. Next, rinse the strip with distilled water. In the result, a blue colored dot appears at the test john of the ELISA strip. In conclusion, both ELISA and Western blots are qualitative and quantitative methods with their level of sensitivity. Western blots can however be more specific as it can determine the molecular weight of the detected protein, which ELISA cannot. On the other hand, ELISA is a much more sensitive assay if carried out in a microtiter plate and can be useful in determining antigen or antibody titer, which Western blot cannot. Having its own pros and cons and limitations, the choice of the technique is based on the feasibility of the application of the method.